Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to show how um, we can tune the pool slightly with various parameters um, and then um, go on to um, tuning actual data set parameters. Um, this doesn't go too deep in tuning tuning the pools and the ZFS system can be quite involved um, and if you are looking for a goal of um, a system that's as far fast as possible there are other methods that I won't be showing um, using devices and SSDs and so on and tweaking things um, but these are just basic parameters which should you know generally get get the best out of the pool um, and the data sets. So what I'm going to do first of all is just show what I've got. So I've got a test pool. So I'm going to destroy this test. I'm going to work on some real um, disks now, I think. And hopefully it won't be too slow with that dodgy drive I've got. So I'm going to create a poll called test, which has got a mirror of STB and STC. And I'm going to create one called test2, which is a RAID Z1 of SDD and SDE. And it should warn me that these are differing sizes. Yep. So I'll override that. I'm happy that they're different. So you can see I've got two separate pools, each with a single VDEV. Test pool has got a mirror VDEV and test two has got a rated one VDEV. And we'll do ZFS list. You can see the mirror is the more, well no sorry, it's not, more, not the more efficient of the two, it's because they're both the same size actually. Um, this one's taken the size of the smaller disc. And I can do Z pool list to show that data there. In fact, the second one has got more available space because it's using parity space, whereas the other one it's got less available space because it's just a mirror. There is no extra parity data to store. So the Z pool has got various parameters can be tuned. Some can only be set at creation of the pool and others can be tuned or tweaked after the pool has been created. Um, and some can, well, I think they can all be specified at creation if you wish, um, but there's only some that can be created um, at creation. And to view these, we do Z pool get all and the name of the pool and you can see there's the name of the pool, the name of the property, the value of the property and I believe this minus means you can't change it which makes sense as size and capacity you wouldn't want to change that, the read only. <coughs> um, this alt through the minus means is not set it's, that's the default under the source. Health online, well you can't change that, not directly anyway. That's the ID of the pool and so on.
Um, these features are what um, have appeared since the um, Linux, uh, ZFS on Linux has appeared. Um, I don't know if they're equivalent of what is on the real Oracle ZFS. I don't know that at all, or if it's just something that's been implemented to, um, I don't know, be more efficient. Um, but uh, I will be going through some of these. For example, encry encryption, you can see by default it's enabled. So we don't need to um, do anything with these to actually activate them. You can see they're all active by default. And some of these properties up here are the ones that we um, talking about now. Um, if you do Z pull get all without a pull, you'll get all the properties for all the pulls that you've got on the system. So you can see Z test two has appeared there, and the test one above it. So you can quickly also see some various information about the pull. So you can see that. Um, yeah, it's read write obviously, I always won't be able to do anything with it. Um, to change parameters, um, use the set command. So you can get individual command, uh, individual parameters, so rather than listing the whole one, the whole parameters on the screen, um, you can just pick out various ones. So one that's quite useful, there's this list snapshots, which is set to off. Um, and when, we, when we come to dealing with snapshots, that's one we will be turning on. Um, I can demonstrate that now. If I do Z pull get list snapshots, so the name of the property. You can see I've not specified a pool again, so it just gives me the state for all the pools in the system. Um, if I wanted to know it just for test, I could specify test, and it just tells me that one. If I want to change it, I need to do set list snapshot, snapshots, and then I want to specify how to set it, and I can set it to off, which is the default value. And I can set it to on. And you can see it's changed to on and the source has gone to local. If I change it back to off, you can see it's gone back to off and it knows that that is the default. So the source has gone back to default. So this source identifies how that was changed, why that or where that change came from, and local means it was basically manually changed. Um, dependencies, i.e. snap um, data sets, the source will change from in, if inherit change to inherited. So, if uh, one of these um, properties is available as a ZFS property, the ZF ZFS property will go to inherited if you change a Z pool property and um, I'll be showing that. Um, when I come to uh, look at the um, data set properties. Now, as I said before, the um, there are some properties which can only be set at pool creation and one example is the a shift property so if I examine the a shift property you can see that's by default set to zero and the a shift property is used to tell ZFS what the um, actual block size it should use for the physical disks to um, improve performance and ZFS by and large gets this right, it interrogates the disk and the disk tells it what sector size it's using. Now some disks lie for various reasons, either they have got native for example 4k blocks 
but they report a logical 512k um, or things might go wrong and ZFS gets back the wrong information. So while zero is a good all-rounder, it's sometimes best to set this explicitly when you're setting a pool, um, setting a pool up from scratch. Um, get the um, manufacturer specifications for your discs. Check what the block size really is, what the, sector, what the native sector size is. And then specify this explicitly. Now it's a bitmapped value. Um, so the value here that you set is the is it the radix I think it's called the power two number so it's two to the power of this value is the size of the sector so on a traditional sector size a traditional disk where the sector size is 512 bytes two to the power of nine is 512 so you'd set the a shift value to nine to use 512 uh, 512 byte sectors on the more modern advanced format drives where the sectors are 4K, 4096 bytes, you need to set it to 12 because 2 to the power of 12 is 4096. If you don't set this correctly, you'll get quite a notable performance decrease um, and it can affect the pool in various ways, not only in performance but in other ways. Um, particularly when we come to look at compression and how certain data is compressed or not compressed on the disk with ZFS. So to use this um, at creation, because like, like I said, we can't set it now. If I try and set this now, it won't have it. Um, so if I do set a shift equals nine for test, for example, well, let's see what it's done. It seems to have taken it. Oh, it has changed it. Now, whether this is, this might be something else that has changed with um, ZFS, I don't know whether this is now going to use on the fly um, transfers of uh, 512 explicitly. Let me try and change it to 12. It may be because that is the default anyway. Let me try and change that. No, it has taken it. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I'd have to look this up, actually. Um, previously, once you'd set this, you couldn't change it anymore. It was fixed. Um, now, either ZFS is going to ignore that value and just carry on using what it's been using at the time of creation, or it will actively now write data using this new A-shift value, this new uh, block size of 4K. Other sectors that had previously written at 512, it will remain, remain to read them at 512, but the way ZFS works, as things are changed, um, for example, um, compression and deduplication, it uses the new settings when it writes the new data. So it could be that's what it's doing here, so I don't know. I'll try and find out um, what that behavior is now. Um, and let you know that that's quite surprised me actually um, but what you do the way you do it when you create it from scratch if I destroy this pool is you create the pool as normal but you specify with a little o the parameter that you want to specify. So I want to specify a shift equals 12. Then I suppose, is it, or oh, it might be the parameter first actually, let me just check. Generally these parameters work in any order, but it, as I said before, it's probably best to get them in the right order. Yeah, I did get them in the wrong order. So it's minus O, a shift is the parameter name, or the property name rather equals 12, then the pool name, and then the VDEV type, and then the VDEV itself, or oh, sorry, not the VDEV itself, the 
devices that make up the VDEV. So again, I've forgotten about my slow disk, which is what I'm waiting for at the moment. Okay, it's done it. So now if I do the get a shift command, although I've just created this from scratch, I've created it from scratch with the a shift command as 12. And you can see the source has been set to local because it's overridden the default at creation. Now, if you remember that Z pools have a default data set so if I do ZFS list, although I've not created any data sets, we've got the defaults. So you can see here I did a Z pool, um, sorry, Z pool list. Should just show you that how different it is. Z pool list and ZFS list. So that's showing you stuff that's more to do with the um, pool itself. And then this is showing stuff that's kind of a little bit about the um, the data set side of things. Well, because there's this data set, we can examine the properties of these data sets, even though there's something we haven't created. And we do this in a similar way as we did with the pool. The pool. We do ZFS get all and the data set name, so it'd be test. And here's a whole host of other properties that refer only to the um, data set and not to the pool. So this is the like the uh, subordinate, the children, the child properties because they're part of the data set and not part of the pool. So some are inherited um, and others aren't. Um, so if we do uh, ZFS get all. I'll try and pick one out. Sorry, yeah. Uh, they're separate, sorry. The Z pool properties are separate from the ZFS properties. So if we want to set things globally for the pool that are to do with the data set, we need to set them on the pool data set. So for example, if I wanted to set compression for all by default for all data sets on this pool, I would set this compression value, I'll turn it on. The reason why I don't do it at the pool is because it's not a pool level property. So if I do Z pool get all and just scroll back, you'll see there is no compression property because it's 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 a, a uh, it's not a pool property. Um, if I search for that, actually, so all there is to do with compression is the type of compression that's available. So ZFS get all on the data set for the pool shows us what we can set globally as defaults for any uh, children data sets that we create. So if I change this compression value now to on using ZFS set compression equals on for the test pool, that's the test data set or test pool data set, i.e. the top level one. And now if I get that value, you can see it's set to on and it's local because I've set it manually. Now if I create a child data set on the test pool, and so if I call it test, and if I get the original ZFS compression, you can see it's still set to on and it's a local value. 
But now if I get the value for the data set that I've just created, so it's, this is the child data set, you can see that it's on as it is for the parent because it's been inherited from the parent data set. So this is the pool, i.e. the parent data set. And if I decided I didn't want this, I didn't want the default value, I could overwrite this by setting compression equals off for this child data set. And you can see that is now off and I can see that it's been set locally. If however, I now set the compression for the um, pool data set to off, making that return to the default. So it's gone back to off, although it still says local. I can actually set it to default, I believe. I oh, know you can't. I thought you could. Um, that's set to local because I've changed that to local. If I now look at the compression value for the child data set, that is still local. So it hasn't changed for default as it has for the pool. It's it's retained the local moniker. I'll change it to on, it remains local. And if I get the compression for this, <coughs> um, I thought there was a way of doing this actually by set, change, setting it back to default. No, there isn't. I thought there was. Um, this may be something that changed. I'm sure you could change this back to default. Oh, get compression should be set. It looks like once it's set, it can't be unset anymore. Um, no, I know what it is. There's a, I just remember now, there's a command called unset. No, there isn't. Oh, is it inherit? So that's still as local. Right, okay, so you can make the child inherit. I don't think you can do that for, let's try it. Here we might set this back to default. Yes, it has. Yeah, it has. Okay, so it's the inherit command. I, I seem to vaguely remember, unless I'm mistaken, that you used to set the um, value to default. I might be mistaken though. That might be just something in my head. So it's to use the command inherit to set the default back to um, so that it actually displays default in the source. 
Um, and once again, because I've set, more importantly, because I've set the child as um, the default, this will automatically inherit whatever the pool is set to. Um, now, once again, when you're creating um, pools, you can set the defaults for the pool data set. So, if I examine this, right, so if I destroy test 2 and recreate it, uh, so pull create. You'll see there. There's another minus O option to set the file system, i.e., the data set values. So I can use the minus O. A shift set the A shift value, which is part of the pull property, and I can set it 13, for example, making 8K blocks if I wanted to. But I can also set the default data set properties. So minus O, I want to set compression on. And I want to do multiples of these, so I just specify O again. And I want to do, oh, actually, I think I want to do multiple pool properties. I want to also set list snapshots equals on. And I want to set compression on on the pool file system. And I want to create a RAID Z VDEV on SDD and SDE. And I need to specify the pool name again, which I always seem to forget. Test 2. Again, we get our warning. So that's always the first parameter when we need it. So now if I do Z pool get all for test two and we look for those two that I set. So there's this snapshots has been set to on and it says it's been it says it's been been set by yeah manual override if you like. And the same for the A shift has been set to thirteen and again that's been manually set. Likewise if I do ZFS get all for test. Oops. If we scroll back to the compression, which is up here, you can see it's been set on and you can see it's been manually set with local. So that's how you can globally set parameters for all the subsequent data sets, uh, default values, which even though you're setting default values, you can again override them if, if you want to for individual data sets. And also you can um, you know, specify parameters for the pool itself at creation time. While we're talking about compression, um, it's something that once you set or unset it, those changes only start to take place from the time you change it. So, um, if, for example, you create a pool without without compression, you write some data to it. That data is uncompressed, obviously, because you told it not to do use compression. If you then subsequently turn on compression, the data that was already written to this doesn't suddenly get changed to compressed. It would only get changed to compressed if it was altered or overwritten. But new data that gets written to the um, data set or the pool would be compressed. So if you change parameters halfway through, you can end up with a pool or a data set with mixed uh, data. So you could end up, in this example, with a pool with uncompressed data and compressed data.